Today, no one can deny Airbus's success in aircraft manufacturing. From the absolute dominance of the A320 and A321 in the narrow body segment to the leadership of the A350 in the wide body market, each triumph stands as proof of the company's acumen and strategic vision. Yet Airbus's ambitions seem far from stopping there. Once again, it has sent shockwaves with the introduction of the A220 stretch, a longer version of the already highly successful A220, aiming to beat Boeing. Why is this variant poised to become the next dominant force in the industry? How will this stretch version defeat Boeing? Let's find out. The idea of a stretched A220, or also known as the A220-500, originally the Bombardier C-Series, is not something new. It is a flame that has been smoldering for a long time, even before Airbus took control of the program. In 2023, Airbus senior executives finally went public with what industry insiders had long suspected. They were seriously studying the possibility of stretching the A220-300, paving the way for a new variant, whether it would be called the A220-500, A221, or any other name. Then these rumors suddenly quieted down. Not because Airbus had abandoned the plan, but because the company shifted its focus to a more pressing priority, ensuring its strained supply chain could keep up with increasing production rates. This silence, rather than a sign of deadlock, felt more like a quiet preparation for a grand plan. What's notable is that the story of this aircraft is tied to an intense battle of wits between two giants. Back in 2017, Boeing filed a complaint with the U.S. International Trade Commission, accusing Bombardier of dumping C-Series jets at unfairly low prices. But was it merely a dispute over pricing? Or was Boeing afraid of something much bigger? Rumors of the CS500, a stretched version of the C-Series, had Boeing worried. They saw that this aircraft could pose a threat not only to the 737 MAX 7, but also potentially become a direct and even superior competitor to the 737-800 and 737 MAX 8. And perhaps, Boeing was right from the very beginning. Since entering commercial service in 2016, the Airbus A220 has quietly reshaped the very foundation of modern aviation. Despite its seemingly modest size, this aircraft carries formidable strength. It is not a giant plane, but rather a bold statement about the direction of the future. Airlines quickly recognize the A220's core value. Smoother than expected flight performance, astonishing fuel efficiency, and a cabin experience that immediately won over both passengers and crew. With large windows, spacious overhead bins, and a surprisingly quiet cabin, this Airbus aircraft has redefined comfort in narrow-body travel. Then came the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought global aviation to a standstill. Most fleets were grounded, and airports turned into graveyards for idle jets. Yet, while wide bodies and older aircraft went into hibernation, this aircraft kept flying. Thanks to its lightweight structure, ideal capacity for short-haul routes, and superior efficiency, it became a shining star at a time when airlines were desperately seeking cost-saving solutions. It proved its worth, clearly and convincingly. However, Airbus is not content to rest on its achievements. With the new stretched variant, it is setting its sights on something bigger. The plan is to turn this nimble, high-performance aircraft into a formidable new force, the A220-500. Expected to seat between 160 and 170 passengers, it will compete directly with the Boeing 737 MAX 8, and even Airbus's own A320neo, but the transformation goes far beyond just adding more seats. The design will feature structural upgrades, including additional overwing exits, and most importantly, uncompromising safety. It will be larger, bolder, and built to lead. And what is even more intriguing lies beneath the wings. The current A220 is powered by Pratt & Whitney's PW1500G, part of the geared turbofan family. While the geared turbofan line is considered more reliable than the PW1100G engines currently facing issues on other Airbus models, there remain concerns over maintenance cycles and long-term durability. This is a weakness that rivals are watching closely. Meanwhile, GE Aerospace, through its CFM International joint venture with Safran, is also closely monitoring the fight. CEO Larry Culp has hinted that GE could enter the competition by supplying engines for the version 500. If that happens, the engine war could heat up significantly, shifting the balance of power in this crucial market segment. Furthermore, while details about the stretched variant's range remain scarce, analysts are painting an enticing picture. With lighter, more powerful engines and the potential for extra fuel tanks, either center or auxiliary, the A22500 could reach up to 4,000 nautical miles, surpassing even the 737 MAX 8. If Airbus succeeds, this aircraft could not only sell well but also explode in popularity, becoming a true global phenomenon, not just matching, but outclassing its rival. What truly captivates is Airbus's holistic approach. 
a lighter airframe, improved fuel efficiency despite the larger size, and a carefully designed cabin layout tailored to the real-world needs of today's airline operations. This is not just a stretched variant, it is the next chapter, a strategic weapon in Airbus's campaign for market dominance. When can we expect to see this new aircraft? With the A2-2500 set to debut, expected to enter service after 2030, Airbus is quietly laying the groundwork for what could become its next commercial blockbuster. This stretched version of the already highly successful A220 is generating huge anticipation, and for good reason. It promises to attract an entirely new wave of customers, airlines seeking greater capacity while maintaining the efficiency and flexibility that defined the original aircraft. So far, the A220 program has received a total of 898 orders, the majority of which are for the larger version 300. This overwhelming preference highlights a key point. Airlines are increasingly leaning toward higher capacity aircraft. This very trend is fueling growing confidence that when the stretched version finally takes to the skies, it won't just follow in its predecessor's footsteps, it may well surpass it. A larger variant simply makes sense, and many airlines have been waiting a long time for this stretch to happen. One of the most vocal supporters is Breeze Airways, a rapidly growing U.S. low-cost carrier known for targeting underserved routes with precision. Breeze has repeatedly hinted that a stretched aircraft would be a perfect fit for its unique operating model, and why the A320neo, despite its popularity, still does not meet its specific needs. David Neelman, the visionary founder of both JetBlue and Breeze, even took to LinkedIn to openly share his airline's fleet strategy. While acknowledging the important role Embraer Jets played in his previous ventures, he made one thing very clear. Times have changed. For him, the A220 is now the ideal aircraft, not only for its fuel efficiency and passenger comfort, but also because it can fly farther. In his view, this is truly a transcontinental aircraft, something the Embraer E2 simply cannot match. And that matters. Range means opportunity. With the stretched variant, Breeze could open longer routes while still maintaining a single, streamlined fleet, a major advantage in an industry where operational complexity can quickly erode profits. Neeleman also emphasized that Airbus's newer technology, combined with the aircraft's expanded seating capacity, gives the A2-2500 a clear edge as a long-term fleet platform. Breeze is not just interested, they're waiting. But Breeze is far from alone. Air Canada is also expected to order version 500, seeing it as the perfect successor to its aging A320 CEO fleet. With 8 MAX aircraft already delivered to Rouge, there is a noticeable gap in Air Canada's narrow-body strategy. The version 500 fits neatly into that space, offering more seats, modern technology, and the range to get the job done. Then there's Air Baltic, arguably the most A220-dependent airline in the world. With an all-A220 fleet and ambitious plans to expand across Europe and beyond, Air Baltic is a prime candidate to become the launch customer for this variant. For them, this is not just a nice-to-have. It is a natural evolution. A larger aircraft would allow them to tap into higher demand routes without disrupting their standardized fleet model. And in modern aviation, operational consistency is key. Globally, airlines that value efficiency, long-range, and fleet simplicity are paying attention. The stretched version is no longer just a concept on paper. It is steadily emerging as a strategic solution to real-world challenges. And as the market shifts toward aircraft sized for longer ranges and leaner economics, Airbus may once again be ready to rewrite the rules of the game, one step at a time. As Airbus prepares to elevate the A220 family to a new level of performance and capacity, is the A220-500 poised to encroach on the budget segment of the A320neo family? At first glance, this seems entirely possible. With a projected capacity of around 160 to 170 seats, the A220-500 sits just below the A320neo, which typically accommodates 180 to 186 passengers in a high-density single-class configuration. For low-cost carriers, that gap is close enough to invite comparison. But beyond seat count, the stretch version offers something else. Superior efficiency on short and medium-haul routes. Its lighter composite airframe and advanced aerodynamic design reduce fuel burn per seat, particularly on routes that don't require the maximum payload capacity of the A32neo. For airlines operating on thinner, less saturated routes, this efficiency can make a significant difference to profit margins. That said, the A320neo still holds important advantages in certain areas. Greater cargo capacity, a mature global support ecosystem, and proven high-density operational performance make it the aircraft of choice for many high-traffic short-haul routes. In busier networks, especially where every seat counts and frequency is critical, 
the A320 Nineo remains a strong contender. So, where does the A22500 fit? Right in the middle. For new or expanding low-cost carriers seeking lower trip costs, longer range, and more operational flexibility without sacrificing too many seats, the A22500 could be the top pick. Breeze Airways is a prime example, favoring the A220's economics over the A320neo, particularly on medium-haul transcontinental routes or underserved markets. Airbus is well aware of the potential overlap, but rather than avoiding it, they seem to be embracing it, positioning the A22500 as a complementary option rather than a direct replacement. By offering both, Airbus widens its net. Airlines can scale up or down within a familiar cockpit environment, maintenance framework, and support system. While the A22500 may eat into the lower end of the A320 NEO segment, especially for value-focused operators, it won't replace it entirely. What it will do is push Airbus's dominance deeper into Boeing's stronghold, giving airlines an option they previously lacked, a right-sized, long-range, narrow body optimized for today's leaner, smarter airline business models. Could this be the aircraft that threatens Boeing? What do you think? Share your thoughts with us. Thanks and stay safe.